Hi, Deirdre McNamara here from Letterkenny IT. I'm just going to show you how to input some information from a questionnaire uh, into Microsoft Excel. Uh, now, what I have open in front of me is a Microsoft Word document with a, a questionnaire that I downloaded off the internet. Um, I think it came from McGraw-Hill. Um, now, in this questionnaire, the first question here says, what is your father's highest level of educational qualification? Um, and the response you can give, there are eight possible responses. You can say that your father had no educational qualifications and you'd tick here, uh, a CSE and you'd cl click here, a master's degree and you'd circle here, a PhD or other don't know. So you'd circle the particular number that's associated with it. So each uh, possible answer has been given a number code, which will make it a lot easier when we take it into Microsoft Excel. Uh, question two is very similar. Um, it's what's your mother's highest level of education? And over here, you'd circle the particular number that uh, related to your mother. So if your mother uh, had a master's degree, you'd circle number five. So let's look over at Excel. Uh, we've typed in, somebody has actually put in all of the uh, information for us. Um, so over here are each of the questionnaires. So that's the first person who filled in a whole questionnaire. And here are the results moving along the way of all the answers that they gave on one sheet of a questionnaire. And here's the second person and their answers and the third person and across and their answers. So the way we read this is the first person for question one gave us answer three. So what does that three mean? Let's look back at Microsoft Word uh, here. So question one, they said three, and I look out here, that means that the person had an A-level, the father had an A-level or equivalent. Okay, and that's why it's gone in as number three. Let's look again at Microsoft Excel. So the second person, their father had number six was the level of, of uh, qualification. And let's look back over again. So number six, they had a PhD. So the second person who replied, their father had a PhD. So that's how you read the first um, set of questions and likewise for the second set of questions. So we're just going to cover in this um, video, we'll just take a look at question one, two and three and then the rest of them kind of follow suit. So question three is, do you have an older brother or sister who has undertaken an undergraduate degree? If you answer yes in Excel, you mark that down as number one. And if you answer no in Excel, you mark that in as number two. So let's look back at our Excel file. So we can see the person who answered the first questionnaire, question three, they put number two, which means, let's look back, what did number two mean again? Number two was no, they don't have an older brother or sister who has undertaken an undergraduate degree. Okay, so there's the connection between our questionnaire and the results that we've put in to Microsoft Excel. So somebody has uh, put in all of that information and all that we've done is put in some headings up the top. Um, so I'll just zoom in so you can see that. So we've just put in a heading results for question one. I've just typed in results underscore Q1 and I didn't want to type them out again and again. So you can just results Q1 and then you just drag it along and it puts in the results for each of them. Now, we're going to be referring to each of these results uh, individually. So that can be tricky enough. So I thought it might be easier if we named them. You don't have to, but I think it's a good idea. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select the results for question one. And there are 26 people who replied to our questionnaire. So I have 26 numbers to um, select. So I've just selected. I don't include the heading. I just select the numbers for um, question one. Now, to name this area, I right mouse click and I click on define name. So let's click on define name. Now, automatically it picked up results underscore Q underscore one as our heading because it was the thing that was above this area. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we just click on OK. So I'll do the same for question two. I'll just select my results for question two, right mouse click, define name. It already picked up my heading and OK. We're just going to do three videos in this or three questions in this video. So I'll just do number three as well. Right mouse click and define name. It has picked up our heading and OK. And you'd carry on doing question four, question five the whole way along. And in this sample questionnaire, uh, there were 14 questions in total. So now we've made um, our numbers easy 
um, to find okay and easy to refer to okay so on this sheet we have all the information and we thought uh, we're going to put the um, charts onto separate sheets uh, but we keep all the data on the first sheet so we will go over to the first uh, tab down the bottom here and in this one we're going to put the results of question one and question two now here are the English the sort of word responses for question one and question two so let's have a look at again what that's talking about so in here if I put a one that means no educational qualifications so it's the English translation of what the one means so for number two the English translation is a CSE O level GCSE or equivalent number three means an A level number four means so it's the translation of what those numbers relate to okay so back into Microsoft Excel so <clears throat> what we want to see now is how many in the results over here for question one how many ones did we have how many ones were in that group there so in here how many people replied one which means that their father had no educational qualifications and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the count if function in Microsoft Excel um, now in this sheet if you hold your mouse over it I've actually got a little helper on it so a little comment that will help you go through it but I'm actually going to talk you through that now uh, in, the ex in this video so we're going to click on the FX function over here so let's click on FX okay I was using it recently it probably won't come up here for you so let's go to all and in here we'll type in C O U N T I F count if did I spell that right I think, it's, I think I have an I in there C O U N T count if and I press enter and up pops count if and we found it so you just find count if and click on OK now the count if function has two arguments to it it says where is the information that you want us to count okay and we have it on the data sheet but we nicely named it so it's easy to find it's our question one data uh, and remember we named it so it was results yes you and T S underscore Q underscore one and you can see I can see here it's working because it's found the information okay so that's where we want it to look and what do we want it to match so we want to find out how many have no educational qualifications or where we typed in a number one so how many ones do we have in that string of data so instead of typing in the one I can just click on the one over there and we click on OK so now in this one here we want to count how many twos there are in this one here we want to count how many threes so we can just drag down that formula that formula will drag down nicely okay so what this is telling us is that there is one person who said that their father had no educational qualifications there are six people who said their fathers had a CSE O level GCSE or equivalent there are two people who had A level or equivalent there were zero people who had other um, there were four people who said they didn't know etc etc now I'm wondering have I got everybody is there any mistakes in there so I'll just click onto the total area I'm going to go back to my home tab and I'm going to use autosum just to see how many I have in there and I can see when I add up the one the six the two and all of those I get 25 now let's see how many people actually did the questionnaire so one two three there's 26 people did the questionnaire but I have only 25 results so what that says to me is this is the number of people who answered one two three four five six seven or eight so we've counted up how many of these but somebody down here gave another answer that wasn't either one two three four five six seven or eight and I could see here somebody typed in nine that their uh, answer for num question number one was nine but if we look back onto our word document we don't have a nine so somewhere something's gone wrong so let's look back again in here so what we do here is we'd physically look at the bundle of papers of our questionnaires we'd find questionnaire number six and we'd look at the answer and see maybe we mistyped that maybe that should have been a six or maybe it should have been a one okay and we check so that's actually wrong so we have to check that okay so that's just a little check to make sure that everything is going right so that's us done um, the first question 
now let's do the second question. The second question is very, very similar. And I just go through the process again. OK, so we're going to use the COUNTIF function. We click onto the FX. We've used it recently, so it's popped up here and OK. What we're going to look up is the results. Yes, results for Q2. So it's question two results. And we're not looking at question question two results. And the criteria is that it's going to be this one over here. And OK. And then we just drag down. And we can see that we have our results here. And we might get a total uh, across the bottom there. OK, and again, we obviously have something funny here because there aren't 26 results. We've only 25. So somewhere along, somebody has typed an answer that wasn't either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which are the only valid answers. Somebody's put in some sort of answer that's a bit wonky, that isn't coming up correct. So you have to go back and find uh, what has happened there. OK, so now we have our results. We need to create a chart out of it. And it's very, very simple in Excel. The first thing you do is you select the area. And we just select column A and B. We've got our English responses and how many people gave those responses. And we click on Insert. And we could do a pie chart. I think there's a bit too much for a pie chart. I might go with a column chart. And I'm just going to do a plain old 2D column chart and see. Automatically, it pops out for you. It picks up this as your title. It picks up these as the headings down the bottom. And we can see here clearly um, how many people have a PhD, how many people have no education, and it's all laid out for you. And again, you can look at the other videos to see how to alter your chart. So that's the first one. The next one we want to do then is look at uh, how what the replies are for question two. So this is the information and this is the information, but they're not side by side. So what we have to do is the first thing we do is we select this column from cell A1 to A9 and you let go of your mouse. Then we hold down CTRL or control on your keyboard, bottom left hand corner, and then click and drag down like that. So we're going to make a chart this time out of that and that. And we exactly the same, insert column, 2D column, and out pops our chart again. And that's us finished doing question uh, one and question two. And we could change the titles and make it prettier, etc. OK, so let's look at question three then. And again, uh, this is very similar. So question three, we'll look at the word uh, document. Question three, do you have an older brother or sister who has an undertaken an undergraduate degree? Yes is one, two is no. OK, let's go back to Excel. Oh, sorry, I've done this already. I'll just have to delete my results. OK, um, so on the data sheet here, we had already named our results. So this is the information we're going to look up. And we're trying to find out how many ones do we have? How many twos do we have? So we go to quarter three or question three. We click in here. And again, we're going to use the count if function. Count if and OK. The range will be results underscore Q underscore three question three. And the criteria would be the one over here and OK. And then we drag it down. OK, now to create our chart, we just select the, a small amount of information with my, which would be very appropriate for a pie chart. So let's go to insert and pie. I'm going to choose this pie chart over here in pops the pie chart for us. I don't really like the yes, no over here. I think I prefer my yes and my no to be actually in the little pieces of the pie. So. I'm just going to go to Layout, Data Labels, More Data Label Options. I'm going to go to Category Name and Close. So you can see I've got no. 14 people said no. 12 people said yes. I don't need this thing over here. So that's called Legend. I'm going to go Legend None. And there is my third chart. OK, so you carry on then and do the rest of the questions in the same sort of format. Um, and this is the end of this video. Thank you.